Well, God bless you, family. This is Pastor. It's good to be with you for another perfecting class on this September the 13th of 2020. The Lord is good, and I pray that His mercy and grace and His divine love is abiding with you and keeping you. We're going to get right into the lesson. It's not a very long lesson. It's a very short scriptures. We don't have a lot of scriptures to expound upon. But uh, we are good and always happy to be a part of the study of God's Word. So we're going to get right into God's Word. We're going to ask for His blessings and His guidance. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity. And we don't take for granted to be able to use this technology, Lord, to share your Word. Precious Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Speak through me to your people. Teach us and give us insight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. The title of our lesson is God Provides Water from a Rock. God Provides Water from a Rock. The lesson text comes from Exodus, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Exodus, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7. I want to supplement something because it's a very important point I want to bring out. And this, these scriptures you can take a note of. Numbers chapter 20, verse 7 through 12. Numbers chapter 20, verses 7 through 12. Now, our golden text. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Psalms 95 and verse 6. So let's take our scripture one verse at a time. Beginning with Exodus chapter 17, looking at verse 1. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. After their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. So here the people are faced with another challenge. They're traveling. They're on their way. God is leading and guiding them and taking them a very specific way on purpose. And we know the purpose of that is always to try the people, to test the people, to reveal what's really in their heart. And it requires sometimes, as pastors say time and time again, a lot of times you don't really know who or what you have unless it's been tested or tried. You don't know. It's the same thing some people do a, uh, a test drive on a car. It can look good, it can smell good, but the engine could be bad. So that's the purpose of having a test drive. So we see that God is taking his people, the people he loved and cherished, the people he has delivered out of Egypt. He's taken them to a special place called the Promised Land. But now we see something very powerful. They are actually in the will of God. And things are not convenient. They're following God's plan, God's will, and things are not, is not accommodative. I mean, there's nothing, there's no luxury to be held. And, and they're going through challenges, even though they're in the will of God. And that's the point you need to remember. God is taking them someplace. He has a specific goal in mind. He has a specific place called the promised land. And he's taking them a special, unique way to prove what is in their heart. So now, uh, remember we talked about last week, they were hungry and they complained and God started to, to feed them with manna from on high and quail for meat. So now they're faced with another situation. And here we are, another challenge. There's no water for the people to drink. And look at verse 2. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses, and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And that word tempt means to test or to try. Why are, why are you confronting me, Moses is, is questioning. Why, why are you murmuring and, and complaining to me? Because in doing so, you're literally putting God to the test. Something we have to remember is this, is that there will be challenges. And that's the main thing to always remember. 
there will be challenges. Even if you're doing the will of God, you will face opposition. You will face uh, challenges. You, you, you will face, you know, uh, people just coming against you. I mean, all kinds of things can come up. And sometimes if you're not careful, it can dissuade you whether or not you're actually in the will of God. So just because you're, you're facing opposition, just because it looks hard, just because it might be a little difficult and it's not so convenient as what these people are expecting, does not mean that you are not in the perfect will of God. And so isn't that an awesome concept in Revelation? Verse 3, And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Here we are again. So we know that they are complaining to the point that you brought us out of a slave situation into this wilderness. And, and, and man, we're, we're once again reminiscing. They're once again reflecting about where they came from and what they had. And now they're questioning Moses. Man, why did you bring us out of Egypt? It hasn't been that long, family. And they're still now they're reminiscing about, about their slave conditions. Now you can't forget, you just, just wonder what type of people they are. Because this, you know, God is doing a lot of things for them. But whenever they face a challenge, it doesn't matter what God has done in the past, they are facing this present challenge of no water and they're facing it with the same bitter type of spirit, the same bitter type of attitude, murmuring and complaining. So in life, there will be challenges. All right. The question is, when these challenges arise, how do you and I handle difficulty? Yes, we have to ask, how do you handle difficulty? I know a lot of times my wife, she helps me out. She prays with pastor because I, I, I've i learned to just simply adapt to a lot of things. Sometimes I don't too much like things to change. I like things to just be where they are and, and be in the order they're supposed to be and whatever. I don't like things to change. I like things to just go as planned. But you know, as you live in life, things don't always go as you've planned. So you have to be adaptable. You have to be flexible. Yes, you have to be willing to, 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 to adapt and to willing to, 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 to make whatever changes that you have to make necessary. So here we are. They're realizing that here they are. They're facing some additional challenges and, 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 and issues and, and situations. But the main question we have to ask is what do you do? Because they will come. Oh, yeah, don't think none of us, we are exempt or we are excluded from difficulties and challenges. No, no, no. Uh-uh. They will come. But the question is, how do you handle them when they will arise and when they come? One of the things we must do is this. We must not forget that the same God that is currently right now providing for you is the same God that will take care of this situation. See, here they are going out getting manna from on high. God is dropping down heavenly bread, wonder bread is what I like to call it. He's feeding them every day. He's giving them quail to eat and manna. And now they're thirsty, you know. And, but the same God, you have to reflect upon the same God that's providing the manna and the same God that's providing the quail is the same God, I'm quite sure, that's going to provide the water. Oh, so here, here they are. It doesn't matter what you're facing or what the situation is. We can't forget that the same God that brought us through back then will do it again. Yes. Like the question is asked of God, is there anything too hard for God? Nothing. So no matter what you're facing, no matter what the challenges might be, there is absolutely nothing too hard for our Lord and Savior. So this is the thing that they have to deal with. They are facing, again, a challenge, and they're forgetting. Whoa, they're, they're not even reflecting upon the fact that God is currently right now, through their food, feeding them with 
heavenly bread and feeding them with, with, with quail for, for, for meat. Okay? But now they're asking for another situation. They're facing thirst. And how quickly they, they have just simply disregarded the fact that God is currently, right now, he's currently providing for them. And they have neglected to even reflect upon that. And now here they are, going all the way back to Egypt. They just skipped over some things, and they're back in Egypt now, asking Moses, why did you bring us out here? You know, you brought us out here, us and our children. Cattle, everything. You, you're going to kill us all. Everybody's thirsty and hungry. How quickly, family, we have to realize that there will be challenges even when we do the will of God. Even when we're following his perfect plan, there will be challenges. But one thing that we can rest assured of is that we don't have to fix everything. We don't have to plan everything. We don't have to be prepared for everything. We simply have to trust God that he is going to provide. He's going to take care of us. He's going to do whatever is necessary. So whenever there's a challenge, whenever there's a problem, you know, the Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord. So when, the, when life hands you something you know you can't handle, you just simply say, here, Lord, this is yours. This is not mine. I'm giving it to you, Father. I'm casting all my cares and concerns to you, Father. So here Moses, poor Moses, my Lord, he's been picked to lead a, 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 a slightly difficult congregation, isn't he? Difficult people, but Moses is the man. And guess what Moses did? He uses a lot of wisdom in verse 4. And Moses cried. He prayed unto the Lord, in other words, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They are almost be ready to stone me. Man, Moses said, These people are something else, Lord. What, what am I going to do? At least he didn't consult his elders. He didn't consult his local leaders. He didn't consult uh, some friends. Moses went directly straight to God in prayer and saying, Father, what am I going to do? These people are just about ready to stone me. So one of the things we can give Moses credit for is that he used wisdom. So there are challenges. Mm -hmm. there, are op there will be opposition. There will be confrontations. All these things are part of the process. And what do we do when we're faced with something that we can't handle, when we're faced with something that we can't deal with, when we're faced with something that's much larger than, than we are? We go to the same source. We go to our Heavenly Father and cry, Abba, Father, that's Daddy. And Moses went directly to God the Father and shared what was going on. In verse 5, Exodus 17, verse 5. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod. Mm, something about that rod or that stick. Wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thy hand, and go. God says, Go with the elders, go before me, I'm sending you on a journey, and don't forget your rod, or don't forget the stick. Now, there was something on that stick because we know with that same rod or stick, Moses simply tore up Egypt. So there was an anointing upon that rod. And God says, hey, just go for it. Go for it. Take what I have. Use, use the anointing that's upon you and upon that rod. And I'm going to do something very special. So in verse 6, Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock. And there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So here the Lord is telling Moses, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of this situation, Moses. Don't you worry about it. Just simply follow my instructions. And that's very powerful. We have to, in order to receive everything in the fullness of what God has for us, we have to make sure we follow his plan. We follow his instructions. 
we follow his pattern. He tells us to do something specifically. We do it ex exactly the way he said to do it. You don't add to it and you don't take away from it. You do it specifically exactly the way God tells you and shows you how to do something. So God said, Moses, I'm going to take you to a special rock, a rock in horror, and I shall smite the rock. You're going to actually hit it, Moses, and there shall come water out of the rock. Now, remember now, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people. You, know, you think of close to over a million, some estimate over a million plus people, and think about them and their cattle and their children. Think about everyone that has to drink. So this water was something else. This water had to flow for a while. So out of this rock came, my Lord, uh, just gushes and, and, and just, just overflowing with, with rivers and, 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 and just, just levees and things. So spreading out among the people, this water just went in all different directions. Everybody was able to drink and quench that, their thirst. Even the animals had their own little private uh, drink from this rock. So we see something very, very special here. First thing I want to make note of is this, is that God supernaturally uh, provided for his people. But now God could have done, you know, could have given water in any other form. But he had already set up to the fact that this rock would be the source to meet this challenge. All right? And he said, smack the rock. But think about it. Well, who ever heard of getting water from a rock? You know? Uh, there was nothing natural about this. There was no river available. There was no stream or anything. It, Moses struck the rock and supernaturally. God calls the water to gush and, and flow out from that rock so over a million plus people could quench their thirst and, and to be able to just drink water whenever they need it. So God is awesome. Yes, he is. But he told Moses something very, very powerful. He said, I want you to smite the rock. And, one, and something I shared with you I wanted you to make a note of is this is that we want to get the fullness of what God has for us. And that's why pastor shares a lot about spending time with the Lord in prayer, spending time in his word, reading and studying, getting familiar with his voice as he speaks to you, as he guides you. Because when you hear the Lord and when you respond in obedience to what he is telling you to do, you're going to receive the fullness of what God has for you. Now, in this instance, I want to show you something. And this, is, this is in Numbers chapter 20, verse 7. In this situation in Exodus, we see that Moses is, is, is obedient to God. He does specifically what God says to do. He, he strikes the rock. And sure enough, they begin to drink. And out of the rock came enough water for all these people to drink, uh, plus their cattle. Now look at Numbers, chapter 20, verse 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye to the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. All right, here's another instance where they are facing a challenge and they need to receive water to quench their thirst. Now, in Exodus chapter 17, verse 6, God says to Moses specifically, smite the rock. Okay? Now, in Numbers chapter 20, verse 7, God says very specifically, now listen. He said, speak to the rock. Not hit it, but speak to the rock. So here they're, they're needing the same thing. Here, here, here the people are needing the same type of miracle. But God chooses to do it a different way. All right? People are needing water. In Exodus, he said, smite a rock. Hit it. And now in Numbers, they're still needing water. 
And God is saying, don't, don't, don't smite it this time. I want you to speak to the rock. Isn't that something? So it's just, you may say, well, Pastor, what, what's big there? It, it is it's very important that we hear God clearly and we obey him and we follow his instructions to the T. He did not say hit the rock this time. He said, speak to the rock. So, so if you look at verse, verse 9, and Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. Now, can't you understand that Moses is probably a little frustrated now with the people? He didn't call them, Hear now, ye children of God. Hear now, ye you, you, you holy ones. He said, here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? So Moses is kind of like saying he's had it and he's kind of frustrated, you know, and something we shouldn't do. Uh, don't make uh, important decisions when you're frustrated. and Don't make important decisions when you're angry and when you're upset. Moses is about to make a mistake because he is frustrated. And how many of us sometimes we make uh, rash decisions and we make, uh, uh, you know, irresponsible mistakes when we are frustrated or we are angered or, or we are you know, upset for whatever reason we might be. Now, Moses has been frustrated because he's been leading a very, very, uh, you know, difficult uh, people. But nonetheless, he's still the leader and he's got to, he should com, uh, always maintain his composure. But Moses said, here now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, Numbers chapter 20, verse 11. And with his rod, he smote the rock twice. Now, that's not what God told him to do. And in and, and, and verse 8, God said, Numbers 20, verse 8, God said, speak to the rock. But Moses took it upon himself to deviate from God's plan. And instead of speaking to the rock, Moses smoked the rock twice. And guess what? The water came out of the rock. And it came out abundantly. And the congregation drank and their beasts also. Well, obviously, it worked. God said, speak to the rock, but Moses chose to smite the rock. But hey, look at the results. The people still got water, so what's the big deal? It is a big deal. God honored that, but he did not specifically do what God said to do, instructed him to do, not to strike the rock, but to speak to the rock. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, and look what he said. Because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Wait a minute, Lord. Uh, would you like to, re can you repeat that? Did, did I hear you correctly? What did you just say to Moses and Aaron? He said, because Moses, you didn't believe me. You didn't sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. In other words, Moses will not make it to the promised land. Wait a minute. He's the leader. He's in charge. Surely there must be a, uh, a mistake here. Something is wrong. No. That's mean that God didn't love him. It just simply means... Because of his disobedience, he did, he's not going to receive the fullness of what God had planned for him. He's not going to be able to take the people in. Isn't that something? So God said, speak to the rock. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 6, he said, smite the rock. Still a rock. Still the same situation. They still need water. But you have to be careful. You have to follow God intuitively. And you have to know that God, when he speaks, you want to be specific. Because it's the details that you want to pay attention to. Moses acted out of frustration. He acted out of anger. And now we see, 
as a result of his spur of the moment frustrated uh, actions, he has forfeited himself from being able to enter the place called the promised land. So we have to make sure, family, that as we go through life, this is a beautiful lesson. I've enjoyed it. As we go through life, we have to realize that there will be challenges, and especially when you deal with people, sometimes there can be levels of, 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 of disappointment, levels of being frustrated and aggravated, but nonetheless, you don't let people cause you to act out of character. You must always be who you are and be a professional. And, and, and so we think about this. Moses, wow, doesn't even realize it. But in Numbers, Moses, you're going to be so frustrated by the time you get to the book of Numbers with this congregation that you're going to do something out of the spur of anger. You don't ever anger, you know, you, 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 you don't ever let anger cause you to do something. And there's so many people, look how many people are in prison now because one moment of anger, you can see that. One moment of anger or frustration altered their whole life. Now they're living a life of confinement. If they can go back to that moment where they, where, where they allowed that emotion of anger it caused them to make a rash decision. I'm quite sure they would be willing to change it. So here we find with Moses. Uh, I wanted to add this numbers because it gives us a little bit more insight and a whole nother perspective of how important it is to hear God and do specifically, exactly what he tells you to do. And if you do that, you're going to receive the fullness of what God has for us. So, as we go back to our uh, original lesson text, uh, verse 7, our final verse, and, 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 and he called the name of the place uh, Massa, which simply means temptation or tested, and Meribah, which simply means strife, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? So Moses, this thing is building, it's starting to build. And we see that Moses called the name of the place it's a test or temptation and strife and contention. He just he, he's starting to let this thing build and build. It's starting to it's starting to affect him a little bit. So 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 we see here that the people, all that God has done for them, they're still questioning whether or not the Lord is among them or not. One of the things that you need to make sure of and you need to guard very closely and you need to cultivate and make sure that you cultivate that abiding presence of God in your life. Yes, you honor God. And that's why pastor talks a lot about, you know, not living a life, uh, a sloppy life or a sinful life because it might not affect your status with God but it can affect your relationship. So here the people are not a saying simply that they don't even know if God is with us. Surely God is with us. One of the things that we want to always be assured of and, and know for a fact is that our Heavenly Father is with us. He will never leave us or he will never forsake us. So this is an awesome word. It gives us an opportunity to see how people can be it gives us the opportunity we've studied that God will give us a specific instruction and we have to follow those instructions. This lesson also lets us know that even though we're doing the will of God, even though we're traveling on the path that he has given us, it might not always be uh, to our accommodations or, or to our liking, but God has taken us someplace very special. So don't complain because things are not exactly the way you desire for them to be. And remember, if you're in any leadership position or any type of influence, you don't have to be like Moses leading a, a whole congregation. You could just be a parent. You can be like pastor, um, a pastor or, or, or a leader or whatever. But 
even as a parent, you have influence. And you should never discipline your children out of anger. You should never beat them out of anger. You know, you should calm down first. You, know, you don't ever do something or say something. Because uh, we see that even though Moses uh, uh, received instructions from God, he deviated from speaking to the rock to striking the rock. And that caused him to forfeit him being able to walk in and receive the fullness of God promise and that was to enter into the promised land. So this is a wonderful lesson. I pray that uh, a lot of the ideas and concepts uh, um, will abide with you and I pray that you've learned something and, and you can use that to build upon it as we continue to grow and continue to abide in the vine and allow God to feed us as he always has. Pastor again we love you, we appreciate you, we thank God for the word, and we pray that God will continue to richly bless and keep you, it is our prayer. God bless.